you know, the biggest problem with the bank accounts yeah. um, at this section in particular is people missing the little um, small accounts, old accounts, foreign accounts. Um, and so, I, you know, I made a little mnemonic for myself uh, and I'm going to share it with you. Um, you don't have to use this, but um, it, I, I find it uh, I find it helpful. So let me see if I can find it. I call it apricot. Good. All right. So before I'm going to actually stop share for a sec. Okay. The A in apricot stands for apps. So take out your phone. Okay. Uh -huh. And having nothing to do with this sheet. Of, of the financial statement, take out a piece of paper. Okay. And look on your phone for all your banking apps. Okay. Now I can go back to share screen. Okay. And then you're going to do something to the effect of this TD Bank. Okay. Yeah. You're going to make, you're going to make a list of your apps. Simply Financial, DIBC. I'm just making this up, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you might have other apps that are financial, um, including stuff to deal with cryptocurrency. Okay. okay. You, may, you may also have an Amazon app that has money in it. Like, in other words, you understand that, that there are online wallets that ha that that you may have accounts in, even if they're not necessarily bank accounts. Wow, that's right. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So I, I there's a list, right? Um, I'm not going to get into the specifics of them, but I am going to add the cryptocurrency because that is a big issue now, and mm -hmm. the form doesn't uh, the form predates the existence of cryptocurrencies, so it doesn't right. even. Okay. And then what you should do is go on the app and then make a list of the bank accounts underneath within it. So TD, you might have a checking account, you might have a savings account, right? You might have a TFSA, right. you may have a credit card, right? right? I, we're just talking all accounts. You might have a mortgage, right? Secured line, right? I, I, and I'm 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 just do, doing the most typical stuff: secured line of credit. Right or just a regular line of credit, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, you might even have, the thing about apps or the, the thing about banks is that like you may have all of your accounts on your phone. Not always, but you might, like just mm -hmm. doing number one may help you, right? Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you would just wanna quickly do when you jot down this list is, do I own any of these jointly with somebody else and in right. particular and certainly in particular with the other party? Right. So let's just say if there is, I would just say checking joint. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can put it in a bracket if you want. Right. Okay. Now that you have this list, and you could do it for everything. Okay. Right. So I'm not I'm not going to do it everything. Um, then you can then then the next thing you want to do is jot down the last four digits of each bank account number. Uh, oh, five, I'll do one, one, two, three, right. savings, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, you got a eight, nine, zero, one. <laughs> right. um, so that you have now a list of your actual accounts right. and they're with TD Bank. So now if you could go to the, to your, and this is current, this is your current today bank accounts, right? Right. We're starting always with today and moving backwards. It's usually the easiest way to do it. Right. it but sense. now you can do checking TD bank, right? I hate these forms, but they are what they are. One, two, three, four. Okay, and now you could do that for all of these. Whoops, for the app, right? You can, you can jot these down. Now, obviously the credit card mortgage, the line of credit, that's gonna go down into your debts and other liabilities, part oh, five yes. down here. Okay? Yes. And it's worth it. You can start your list. It's great. Mortgage, okay? And you also, you wanna say if it's joint or not, okay? 
So yeah. if it's not joint, if you don't put, if you just put line of credit, you know, I like to say whether the line of credit is secured or not. So let's say unsecured line of credit, let's call it that. If, if you don't, if you don't write joint on it, it's assumed that you own 100% of that. Mm, okay. Okay. But right, so right. that's why you really want, um, I kind of wish the debts was set up the same as the accounts, but you basically want to say TD bank, you know, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now going back here, so you're going to be making a list. Okay. And we're not even up to putting numbers on it yet. Um, you could, if you want to, so let's say there's $500 here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I kind of would tell you to hold off on the numbers. I want to continue on making the list. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. So we have the stuff that's on your apps. Then I want you to think of, so remember it's apricot. So now P. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Think about your prior employment. Okay. What's special about your prior employment? It might be, and people don't think about this, that you had a pension or you have a pension or you have some kind of savings account with your prior from your prior employment that you never think about, okay? And sometimes, most times when you have a pension, uh, it gets paid into what's called a lira, okay? Which is a locked in retirement account. Mm -hmm. um, but, that, but these types of accounts need to be uh, disclosed. So if, it's, if, if you have a lira, then it might also be at a bank that you never use kind of thing. Let's put Scotiabank here, you know, and then five, six, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but we're just making a list of your accounts and then you'll end up putting the Lira on this list also. Right. Okay. Let's keep going. Okay. Retirement accounts. So the reason why retirement accounts has its own um, line item in a sense for me is because um, there are there are accounts that you don't necessarily think of all the time and may not be covered in your apps. I'm trying to cover every type of account that you have, right? Even the ones you don't think about. Mm -hmm. But under an uh, under retirement retirement accounts would be your RSPs. Okay, right. generally speaking, right. um, I am going to put pension here if you have one through your employment. But the truth is that that's going to come a little later also. But it's good to, duplication is not necessarily a bad thing. Okay. Next, apricot. Okay, so we're up to apri. <laughs> okay. So under investments yeah. would be crypto. So, so again, investments could be long-term and you may not think about them. Mm -hmm. And I want you to expand what you think of as investments. So for example... Um, the most typical one would be in a brokerage account, right? And and you know you could you could shop with a TD Bank, but but your investments are with TD Waterhouse, for example, and you may not have an app for that. Right. Okay, it's like it may not be connected a hundred percent. Depends on your your style of uh, of of um, of banking. Okay, so it's just, there's brokerage accounts. There's bonds, like Canada bonds, Ontario bonds, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, there can be, what else could be? I mean, technically crypto falls under this also as an investment. Mm -hmm. Fine. Um, you know, technically also TFSAs fall under as an investment. Okay. After investments, we have current employment. Now, many times people will have through their employment an RRSP account or some other kind of savings account, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and the reason why is because the employer does some form of matching. Mm -hmm. They may have something called a DPSB. Um, uh, yeah, there's different versions of, um, I'm on the next page, ESOP. There's different saving plans that uh, that employees can have. That you, again, you're not going to have an app for them necessarily. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and so you want to make sure that that's that that you reflect that on your financial statement. These these accounts, and for again, for each of them, you're going to want to know which um, institution it's with, 
you know, let's say it's manual life, I'm just making that up. And then you want the account number, it might be your employee number. Um, and here also you can do pension. But also if you have stocks, stock options, like the, the, uh, the, the breadth of the different types of employee uh, benefits that, that employers can provide you are, I wouldn't say they're endless, but there are a lot. You can have something called RSUs. Um, I, I'm not gonna go through the whole list, but if you look at your pay stub mm -hmm. and look at the deductions, cause that's where I look, mm -hmm. um, you'll start to see very quickly uh, where your money is being diverted to and you need to reflect these accounts in your financial statement. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are up to C. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you had mentioned this also, assets outside of Canada. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if people move during a marriage, Mm -hmm. it, um, or even before, you know, if you, if you lived in the outside of Canada and, and then you moved to Canada and then got married, you may have stuff just lying around outside of Canada. This applies to, to real property, like actual like land, but also mm -hmm. bank accounts. Um, so think about land. I know we've discussed land already, but just think about that. Um, and bank accounts. And also think about pensions. You know, the CPP, Canada Pension Plan that we pay into, excuse me, um, that, um, that gets equalized outside of the financial statement and outside of the family law uh, equalization calculation, but it does get equalized, the, the, the pension credits. Oh. Um, so you may have a pension, a foreign pension outside of Canada that technically forms property also. Now, putting a value to it is a separate question, but we want to just make sure that there are line, line items here. Mm -hmm. okay, and then lastly, in our apricot, our trust accounts. Mm -hmm. Okay, now trust, trust accounts work in two directions, usually. <laughs> they work up and down. So um, you may have, so the most common one is an RESP, right? This is an account in trust for for a child right. right or for children fine um so you definitely want to you definitely want to record that you have it now as it relates to value I, I, we should take this moment to say that on your financial statement because the this account is not really your money it's the kid's yeah. money mm -hmm. you would put it in okay um who didn't we hit yet? <laughs> I'll just do CIBC, okay? Yeah. Um, and um, four, five, six, seven, fine. And then for the, for the value, you could just say not included, okay? Oh, okay. You could do that. You could do the NA also, but you, what you wanna do is for any date that you're not including it, make sure you say value today is $5,000, okay? Oh. Value on valuation day, wow. $4,800. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're just recording, you're, you're, you're not including it because it's, um, it's not your money technically yeah, speaking, right. um, but it is, it, is, it is money that you have in your name, you're holding it in trust, right. and so therefore you need to disclose it. So, so the other direction of trust accounts is for a parent. So sometimes parents, you know, they'll put you on, on, on title of an account, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. um, for a parent. And th this becomes an issue, like there needs to be a story here and you're, as to whether or not this was a gift to you or whether you're just holding it for management purposes. Oh, interesting, okay. Right? Um, there's case law on this. Uh, it's a legal issue in as much as it's a factual issue. Wow. Like we want to know what the intention was when you were put on the account. And we also want to know whether you use that money, um, uh, you know, or put money into that account. So, um, but this too should be uh, disclosed. Okay. Okay. So in other words, it's an account that you're, you know, you could say joint with parent, with father. Just... Right? Right. Something like that. Sounds good. Okay.
Okay, so let's keep going. So, so once you do that, mm -hmm. so again, if something is, if uh, we'll, we'll deal with a joint account, we're just dealing with this. I'm going to put the word joint here just because I don't have space. Usually I put it under the category. Okay, so now if you have a joint account, mm -hmm. right, so you want to put the full value, so we'll say it's uh, $3,000 on separation, you know, valuation date. Okay, something like that. And then you can uh, put $1,500 here. Okay, wow. some people do, they write the word one half underneath for anything that's half, could do that for the property also. Um, it's not necessary as long as it's clear that it's joint. Right. Okay. Now, finding, um, so you start with the today, you have that list, and then you need to really be honest with yourself and go down the entire list that you have made over here, mm -hmm. your, okay. apricot, your apricot list, mm -hmm. and say to yourself two questions. Have I opened up a new account since separation? Mm. Have I closed an account since separation? Oh, right. I was going to ask you that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you, like, what about... Okay, so, so it's very possible that you have an account joint with father, let's call it, right? Yeah. Let's say joint with my father, just so it's... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so it's very possible that you have an account that exists today, but does yeah. not exist on date of separation. Right. Right? And that's Okay. And then you and you cannot even say not included because it's not your money. <laughs> Again, you, yeah, you would want to put the value, you know, it could say six thousand. I'm just making the number. Okay, and you obviously you want to put the account numbers. I'm running out of numbers. Okay, good. <laughs> um so so this is totally fine. And what you're slowly doing is building up your um, the totals for each of these dates. Now, date of marriage is very difficult if you are married yeah. for a long time. Right, exactly. And you know, I have some tricks that that lawyers have to figure out historic information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, a good starting point is always to find your tax return from right. that period. Right. Um, and that's not, that's easier to get than you think if you contact CRA. Oh, okay. Um, and that will show, for example, if you're at least contributing towards our RSPs at the time, or if you're generating interest income on an account, right. it'll start to hopefully jog your memory um, for accounts. You can also, can you call your bank and say, um, like let's say you've been married for like 25 years. Uh, can you call the bank like to dig, to have them dig up the uh, old account statement? Yeah, so it really depends on the bank. Um, I, I can't speak for the banks because each of them are in, <laughs> on their own. From my experience, yeah. it's it, it, you know the, the, the going rate is uh, six years that they hold on to information. Oh, wow. I think it's a bit longer now that we're in the digital age. Um, I do know that they store information on microfiche. It is okay, possible right. to pull very historic information if they keep it. So, um, so yeah, there are tricks. Um, and definitely, you, there's no harm in asking your bank for information. It might cost you some money. Yeah. Um, and certainly when you get to debts, um, it's harder. It's usually harder to get debt accounts than it is to get bank accounts. Let's keep going. Thank you.